What is the most effective way to design an event schema? It's quite simple. You pick the metrics first and then define the events. Sounds simple. Unfortunately, picking metrics is quite complex. Usually, I avoid this method for people who are starting out, but I think now it's time that we have a look at it. You might know that I'm quite explicit about event schema design when you have watched some of my videos. And people are tracking too many events. Yes, 50 unique events are already too many, especially for product and marketing analytics. This video is sponsored by Mixpanel. Mixpanel has a new way to do product analytics with your warehouse data. You can connect Mixpanel to your data warehouse and then you can run all the product analytics investigations on all the product analytics deep dives on top of your data warehouse data with clean, prepared and high quality data. Check out the link in the description to learn more about the offering. I'm using it and I'm extremely happy to have this new kind of setup for product analytics because it unlocks so many more use cases on top of much better data than before. My usual way to get a minimal but effective setup is to develop the design from the business and product level. Most tracking setups that I know, and I'm guilty of this as well because I did it in the past, is... You define your event schema from the application level, which means you log into your application, your software, whatever, and you go through the typical user journeys and you check where can they click, which is relevant, and then you track an event for that. The problem with this kind of approach is like it will always end up with too many events. And most annoyingly, and this was the part that always drove me crazy, there are still events missing to tell how your business or product is actually doing because we track the events on a too low level. I define today events from a business and product perspective on a high level. This in the end makes it quite easy to then go from the events to the right business and product metrics to understand how the business and how the product is evolving. But if we already have a really good metric setup that help us to understand how the business is performing on different related levels of a metric tree, wouldn't it be nice if we can just define the events based on that? Because then we already know how we can use the data later to create the metric setup that we already have designed. As said before, metric setups are not easy. But if you have watched my webinar with Arby, where he explains the metric tree concept, this can be a good entry point for you to create a really good first metric setup. So let's recap quickly what that means. The idea is, look, metrics, trees, again, just one abstraction, right? Graphs, spreadsheets, whatever, it's a growth model at the end of the day. But the idea is that if you think of it as a tree, then the leaves of that tree are the what's happening. The why did it happen is looking down the tree. The what's mm. going to happen is looking up the tree. The what should we do next is looking at the branches. So let's take an example of MRR, total MRR in this case. So total MRR in this tree is being decomposed into new customers and ASB. New customers is being decomposed into leads times win rate. Just make so quickly lead. ASP. So what is ASP? average selling price. I got some new customers. I sold it at a certain value, right? It comes out to the MRR. You can call this average MRR to be maybe more accurate here. Yeah. Leads times win rate is new customers. It is true. We call these component relationships. It's mm -hmm. true by construction. It's true as a formula. It's true by definition. Leads times win rate will always equal new customers. And so that's the first kind of metric relationship that we have in this tree. We have this notion of these component relationships. The second type of relationship we have is an influence relationship. So speed to lead over here, speed to lead in a B2B context is one of these kind of named metrics that mm -hmm. refers typically to, hey, I have an inbound lead or I had someone that just became a product qualified lead or a marketing qualified lead. How quickly did I connect with them? How quickly did I pick up the phone and call them? How quickly did I email them to text them? How quickly did I engage them? And of course, the notion is that speed to lead is usually positively correlated by a positive driver for win rate. The faster I connect with someone, the more likely I am to win them. But it isn't true by formula. It isn't true by definition, right? It is true empirically. It is true in a kind of a temporally contingent way. It might be very strong today. It might be a weaker relationship tomorrow. It's a probabilistic relationship, right? So the other kind of relationship that we see here that matters are these influence relationships. With the metric tree concept, we can build a powerful initial metric setup and have 
the framework to easily extend it over time if you want to have deeper insight in a specific kind of area of the business. Now the big question is how to get the data to calculate these metrics. The initial reaction of a lot of data teams would be like, we already have some metrics and we already have some dimensions. So they might look, okay, does something of that match for the new metric design that we just created? And they might find something, maybe 30, 40% already. But then they have to find the other things. And so in a classic data model, it's often hard to introduce new dimensions, to introduce new metrics, because it means you have to pull the data through all the data model. I would go for a shortcut. And my usual shortcut for this is to use event data. Event data is usually easier to get and easier to model because you can build it on top of your existing data models. You can look for event data that is already there. And if you don't really see any events, just watch out for timestamps and unique identifiers. So in an account table, you will have a created add column and you will have a unique identifier as an account ID. This already creates an account created event. And this makes it a lot easier to model for the metrics that we need and gives us flexibility to change the metric tree in the future. We can take our metrics tree and translate it into the events that we need. I think that sounds quite good. Let me give you an example that I have developed for a post that I have written about product analytics for data platforms. So here you can see a setup that I have developed for a product analytics setup for tracking data platforms. And this is the metric tree that I'm using here. And I won't go into too many details because we are looking into how to get from metrics to events. But we basically have two revenue streams right now. So on the one hand, we have the subscription revenue, which I think it's quite familiar for most of the people. And then on the other side, we have the compute revenue. Compute revenue is definitely something special for data platforms because in the end, it's a usage-based revenue. Data platforms run jobs and jobs run for a specific amount of time and they charge you for this amount of time in different ways. Sometimes you get credits, sometimes they do it directly on a price per second. But this is like what this metric tree represents. So in the end, like we figure out how many jobs has been run. Then also like we break it down by how many scheduled jobs we have because scheduled jobs for us means planable, forecastable future revenue. So in the end, we want to find out how many jobs do we have, how do they run, how often do they run. And then by that, we can calculate the compute revenue and at the bottom here you can see of course everything starts with accounts so we have accounts here that in the end are then able to schedule these jobs and also like to start a new subscription and then give us a subscription revenue so as you can see this is already quite an extensive metrics tree and but it's just a version one so it might become more extensive over time but it's already pretty powerful, so we can do a lot of things with that. And the interesting thing is like, we take this and we want to develop an event schema from that. The event schema is pretty minimal and as I said, effective. In the end, we just have three entities, account, job, and subscription. And we don't really need so many activities that in the end then create this event, like account created or account deleted. This is enough to get started with the account and it's enough to calculate all the metrics that we have defined on the left side. And for job the same, in the end, this is a typical job lifetime. We have created, scheduled, unscheduled, updated, deleted. And updated, for example, is something that we don't really use, so we could even get rid of it for now. And we also don't need so many properties to get started. Of course, we always want to have an ID, then maybe we have a job type, because it can be different functions on the data platform. So something can be like extracting, loading, anything else can be transformation. So we want to make sure that we have this because this might be something we want to break down later. And then maybe because we extract a lot of data, we want also like to include which kind of connectors have been used or in the other case, which kind of template has been using. And of course, we need to have the runtime in seconds because this is what we need to calculate some metrics on the metric tree. And of course, we want to also know how much cost a job has created for the user. So it's not actually really the cost that it created for us, but it's like the cost that we will then charge the user. And the subscription is also, this is pretty straightforward. It's usually like how I implement subscriptions. So we have created, renewed, expanded, contracted, canceled, and ended, which in the end gives us the full subscription lifetime that you usually have. And that's it. So this is what you have to implement. And this is definitely doable in one or two weeks. And then with one or two weeks, this is implemented. You can support this full metric tree here 
and can build it already. When you look at this, you might think, oh my God, this takes ages to get all the data for this, but actually it doesn't. It's really straightforward and quick. As a recap, when you have a good metric setup, you can use this to ensure you get the event data needed to calculate this metrics. Both go hand in hand and you have a very efficient setup. Therefore, your event data design, aka the tracking plan, will become minimal and effective and can be implemented quickly. As you could see in the example, we don't really need a lot of events to populate a full-grown metrics tree. So don't wait, design your metrics tree, design the events and upgrade how teams talk about and work with the data.